Hello and welcome back to Bitemap Explained. So in today's video, we're going to go through how to use the new route planner on our mobile apps. And how we're going to start with that is first looking how to open the route planner. So there are actually three ways to do this. The first one is pressing plan. You can see here on the home map screen. So if you press plan, uh, the route planner will simply open like that and you can start your planning. The second is going anywhere on the map and doing a short tap. So for example, there, and then this um, dialog box pop up, which gives you the option to either press start here or set destination. And I will click set destination. And then as you can see, it will be the destination in the route planner. And the final one is to long press somewhere on the map, like so, and then it won't give you any dialog box and it will immediately um, create a route and the route plan will pop up and the place that you long pressed will be the destination. And of course, if you want to cancel the route planning at any time, you can simply press cancel right here. So the next thing we're going to look at is how to add and remove waypoints. So you can add waypoints in three different ways. Uh, first way is if, if you have a route created like this one here, you can short tap on the map wherever you want, like so. And then a dialog box will appear, which allows you to either add a stop, uh, which will make it the first waypoint, and then the current destination will be still the current destination. Or you can press set destination and the existing destination will turn into the first waypoint and the stop that you just added will be the destination. So the second way you can do this, once you've created a route, is to simply long press on the map again in another place. So I'll choose here, like so. And what that will do is automatically create the um, original destination into the first waypoint and the place that you just long pressed will now be the destination. And the final way to add a waypoint is to simply look at the route planner and you can press the plus button and then you can add your address into this box here. You can search your address. I will choose something here. And then it will add your waypoint. And yeah, you can easily remove any waypoints also by pressing the minus sign like so, or you can move around the waypoints if you want to by dragging these three lines on the left-hand side. If you press down and you can drag them up, down, you can change the order completely. You can change the start point, you can change the waypoints. And yeah, that is that for that one. So now we'll go through how to choose a routing option. So when you create a route like so, you will see here that uh, it has selected routing. So what we have is actually eight different routing options uh, to best suit your needs. So you can see them here. Uh, we've got balanced, fastest, cycling pass, popular, e-bike, smooth ride, road bike, and mountain bike. Um, the way you choose which profile you want is to, once you get to this menu, is to click on which one you want. So right now it's set to balanced. If I wanted to change to fastest, I could click fastest there and it recalculates the route. If I wanted popular, I can simply click on popular, e-bike, e-bike, and so on. Uh, once you have decided which one you want, you leave it on that and you press the X to get back to the planner and your selected routing will remain. Uh, another point to make is your chosen routing option will be remembered uh, for the next time you create a route. So, and now I will quickly explain the specific characteristics of each routing option. So firstly, we have balanced. Uh, this option provides a good mix of cycling paths and streets with low traffic, and also tries to avoid streets where the speed limit is particularly high, uh, so above 50 kilometers an hour. And the second one that we can look at is fastest. Uh, here, the focus is on the lowest amount of turns and a shorter route. Uh, so cycling paths are given slightly less priority 
uh, this can lead to higher traffic volumes, um, but in my experience, it can also be very nice routes um, too. And the third one is cycling paths. So this will significantly increase the amount of cycling paths the route will take. Uh, and you can actually choose between three setting levels. So you've got low, medium, and high. All of them prioritize cycling paths, but the higher the priority you go, the more likely that there will be significant detours on your route in order to stay on a cycle path. So then we have popular, and this prioritizes well-cycled routes based on our very own heat map data. And then we have e-bike. Um, e-bike includes more elevation and avoids steps. Smooth ride, uh, that's designed to prioritize your comfort and safety. So it avoids obstacles such as stairs, embedded rails, gravel, sand, cobblestones, and heavy traffic. And then we have road bike. Uh, so this is developed specifically for road bikers. Um, it, pr uh, it prioritizes your journey for speed and efficiency. So unpaved roads will get avoided as much as possible. And then finally, we have mountain bike. Uh, this enables the routing to really go on unpaved terrain, uh, mountain bike tracks, and focuses on getting more elevation in your route. So now we're going to look at uh, how you can look at the route stats and your way and surface type in the new route planner. So once you create a route, like so, if you scroll down below the routing, you can see all the route statistics, so the duration, ascent, descent, distance, etc. You can then see your elevation profile of the route you just created. And then below that, you have the way types. Um, so yeah, you can see if it's on a cycle way, if it's on a quiet road, um, a normal road, a living street, busy road, etc. And you can also see what surface it's on, so if it's asphalt, if it's undefined, if it's paved, um, if it's unpaved, and also if it's gravel, etc. And you can also see the cycle route network. So if it's international cycle route, regional cycle route, local cycle route, or none of the above. So that can be a really good way to help plan your routes. So another quite important part of the planning can be these hazard settings that you see there. Uh, so we have community reports, so they're reports that are sent uh, into the Bitemap app by the community. Uh, they might be hazards such as traffic or shards on the road um, and stuff like that, or blocked road, for example. When those reports are reported to us, uh, we, we put them in our map in real time uh, just to help users when they're planning their routes. So as you can see here, when you click on the hazard settings, you can choose as a toggle whether you really want to avoid an obstacle or a hazard, or you don't mind too much. So it might be something little, um, like shards, slippery rows, or a pothole. Uh, so you might not mind, and you can turn that one off, or you can keep them both on. And if you keep them on, it will give you the option of the route without hazards, which might be a bit of a detour. Um, or if you turn them off um, and apply the selection, then it will just send you on a route without uh, considering any hazards that might be there. But one thing to note is that not all hazards might be shown because it's data sent by our community. Um, and yeah, if stuff happens in real time, it might be a delay until it's on the map. So once you've created a route that's exactly to your liking um, with all the waypoints that you want, and the routing option that, that suits you best um, and all of that stuff, then the next step is to either save or start, as you can see in the two buttons here. So if you press save, um, you can choose the route title, you can recheck the route statistics, you can choose which bike type you think it would be perfect for, and you can choose whether you want the route to be private uh, or public. But if you don't want to save the route for later and you want to navigate it right away, uh, what you can do is simply press start and then you can choose which type of navigation you want and off you go. So a question we also get asked quite often is whether the route planner on the app is suited to tablets such as an iPad 
or or something similar. Um, and we say, yes, you can use it, um, but it'd actually be a better idea to use our web app for bigger tablets like that. Um, so how you can do this is go to bikemap.net, log into your account there and navigate to the route planner. And it will look like this. And we think it's much better to use on bigger tablets, especially if you have like a pencil that you're using to plan. Um, and what's really cool is you can kind of still add it to your home screen as an app. Uh, on iOS, if you press in the top right of the of the address bar, you press that button, and you go down to add to home screen, you give it a name, like that web, and it adds, yeah, it will add it to your to your list of apps there. So that is all from Bitemap Explained. If you have any other questions, uh, then please hit us up at support at bitemap.net. And yeah, we'll see you next time.